Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are revisiting the MacBook Pro. I picked up an M1 MacBook a couple of weeks back, about three weeks back when they first launched, and I looked at it from the perspective of game developers. And now I've lived with it for a little while, I've noticed some things that don't work quite as well as intended, so instead of just giving you the good, I'm also going to show you the bad or the negative. Now this doesn't by any means change my verdict, I still think this is a great machine, and if you haven't heard about it already, basically Mac threw the M1 processor in their MacBook Pros, and they also undid a lot of they're stupid. Things that would keep me from buying a Mac in the past, such as the touch bar, are gone. We now have real ports, but the most important thing is we have GPU performance, which is on par with a lot of PCs. Now, you've heard a lot of hype about these machines out there, and it's mostly around video editing, but today I am focusing 100% on the world of game development. Now, as I said earlier on, I already did a video on this using the M1 MacBook Pro for game development, and we looked at Unity, Unreal, Blender, and Godot. And we're going to look at all four of those today. We're going to look at more of the, the downsides that I encountered while doing so. And to be honest, there's nothing really major here for three out of four of those game engines. Uh, so if you're looking for uh, this is a dumping all over the MacBook Pros video, honestly, this really isn't it. They're still pretty nice machines, but there are some definite negatives, and that's what I'm going to share in this video. But first, a quick word from our sponsor, and that is the Unity Asset Store. They have the Black Friday sale going on right now, 500 plus assets on sale, 50% off. On top of that, on Friday, actual Black Friday, they are going to be adding another 150 assets to the list, and then on top of that, they also have these flash deals. Flash deals basically come in, you have um, 20 items available at 90% off, and then it drops to 80%, 70%, 60%, and so on as they continue to sell. So it's kind of like a limited time only sort of deal. Uh, we've got some of these still coming up. So we'll go ahead and take a look at some of them. Uh, so here you can see these are all available still at 70% off at this point. And then we have some upcomings. You could come in here and check these out. Uh, so we go to the last page here. And you're going to see some of these are coming soon. So in a day, this asset is going to start and so on. So there are a ton of assets. So you can get in there early, get up to 90% off savings, but it never goes below 50% off. And check back on Friday when 150 more assets are being added to the 500 assets that are currently 50% off. The sale ends on December 4th, and you can check it out with the link down below. Thanks, Unity Asset Store, for the sponsorship. And now let us jump in. Okay, so I have all four of the products loaded at the same time. We've got the Godot game engine here. We've got uh, the Unity game engine here. We've got the uh, Blender here. And then finally, we have Unreal Engine here. They're all running at the same time, uh, which I have to admit is somewhat impressive. Even more impressive with the MacBooks, I can actually unplug uh, the power and it will run at basically the exact same speed. That is very cool. Now, we're actually going to start things off with the Godot game engine for one very good reason. And I'm going to show you that over here. Godot on the whole runs really, really well. But we're going to take a look. Here is the activity monitor. And we're going to notice two major things here. First off, uh, for some strange reason, the Epic Game Launcher is an absolute pig. I have no idea why it chews up CPU like it does. Unfortunately, it does. So that is definitely one of the negatives with Unreal Engine. We'll get back to that in a second. But we're talking today about the Godot Engine. And what you'll notice here is, even when it's not doing anything, unlike... Uh, so we've got Unreal running here using a little bit of GPU, uh, Blender a little bit of GPU, Unity using a little GPU. They're only grabbing the GPU when they're in action, whereas Godot is chewing it constantly. So that is the really the biggest and only negative I've run into the, the Godot game engine. If you're working with just Godot, you're not, not going to really care if it's chewing up the GPU all the time, but what this does is it really, really kills battery life. Now, another thing I noticed with the Godot game engine is this guy right here. Core Audio Demon is always running, always chewing up about 15-16% of a CPU. Also bad on battery life. But this is the thing. That one hurts for sure. Now one of the nice things is it is built for Apple Silicon so you should get better battery life, better performance and so on. Uh, but that is definitely the big negative with the Godot game engine. And it may not be a negative to some people but it is constantly uh, chewing up GPU even when it's not active. Pretty minor thing, but it does really drain the battery life. I got about three hours of Godot development using the um, third-person shooter example that you're seeing in action right now running. Now, do keep in mind, this is with uh, Godot, Unity, Unreal, and Blender all running at the same time, and this is the kind of performance you can expect. It really works quite well. In terms of actually working with the game engine itself, uh, Godot is pretty flawless. Things work just great. The only real negative I've seen so far is that GPU problem. By the way, if you were wondering, this is the 24-core max uh, version of it with 32 gigs of RAM. So this 
here uh, is Godot. It runs great. The only real negative I've seen, again, is if you switch back over here, you take a look, the GPU is constantly running. So that's why I'm gonna start with Godot because quite frankly, I'm going to shut it down because it's impacting everything else that is running. But Godot otherwise runs flawlessly. It works just like on the desktop. The performance is great, highly recommend it. So next we're going to take a look at whatever shows up next. And that would be Unity. All right, so Unity actually is uh, really good. Uh, it, it runs great on a Mac. The cool thing here is you can run this guy on battery life, running real projects, and you're going to get seven hours it, it's pretty amazing. If you want to do game development on the go, uh, Unity is uh, just perfect. It, it's it's made for Mac Silicon. Um, and if you think about it, this makes a lot of sense because Unity basically started life as a Mac product until Unity, I think it was about 2.5. It was a Mac only product. So Mac has always been an important platform for them and they have um, supported Apple Silicon since day one. So that is nice. There's only uh, two real negatives. There's um, missing CPU light mapper, which is coming at a future point. Uh, but the biggest negative here and this one is a little bit hard to explain, but let me try and show you right here. So I'm gonna add a component and watch my mouse cursor. So see I'm over fly camera. See how long that took to update? See the lag in it? That is the biggest problem I've seen. There's this definite lag when you're dealing with the UI. I've also found it um, with some boxes as well. Sometimes they lag out, sometimes they don't, but definitely on the mouse. So there's like this lag when, so again, it's hard to see uh, in a video, but look at that. So I went over new script and oh, so it's like two seconds for it to switch over and that is infuriating. Now I can't actually tell you if this was an M1 problem or if this is a Monterey problem. Uh, I tried it with the LTS version and this here is the um, well, this is version 2021.2. So this is the newest tech stream version, but this UI lag is really, really frustrating. So hopefully that gets fixed soon. Uh, but as far as it goes, that is the biggest problem I've seen so far. The lack of the light mapper, which hasn't really impacted me to be honest, but this UI lag needs to be fixed. And again, this could be a Monterey problem because uh, the M1 MacBook Pro is shipped with a day one version of Monterey. And every time Mac OS releases a new release, there's always some problems there. Uh, but this is really frustrating. And I've seen it across the board, just UI lag in general. Hopefully it gets fixed in a future update. But for the most part, Unity on the uh, brand new MacBook Pros runs like a dream. And especially the cool part is it runs like a dream when you're on battery as well, which is really quite nice. So, okay, so that is uh, the Unity game engine. The biggest problems here, again, it's this mouse lag, which is just really frustrating. Like, look at that. Uh. One, two, yeah, almost two seconds for the most to, to highlight or update. And hopefully that gets fixed soon. It's a very small thing, but in all honesty, it's probably the most annoying bug of all of the things we are going to talk about today. But that there is Unity on the whole, works pretty solid. Just do be aware, definitely that UI bug is a huge one and the light mapping is being worked on. So next up, we're going to take a look at the Unreal game engine. And to be honest, this is where the biggest parts of problems come in. Now this is Unreal Engine 4.2, seven, whatever the most current version is of the 4.x series. And one thing I want you to see right away, hey, why are you down here? Well, that's because it doesn't have proper full screen support. I have no idea why that is. Another thing to notice is if we head on back over here, Unreal Engine is running on Intel. So this is running through the Rosetta compatibility layer. That means your battery life is gonna be slower and your speed is gonna be a little bit slower because it's emulating uh, x86 processing. Apple did a really good job creating Rosetta, but until it's created for Apple Silicon, like what you see with these other products, uh, that is problematic. Now, again, the other big thing I wanna point out here is Unreal Epic Games Launcher, which you need to load Unreal Engine is for some reason sitting here chewing up a massive amount of CPU. I don't understand why it always does that. You can shut it down by the way, but just be aware that is a really annoying thing. And again, for some reason you can't full screen here. Now there are a couple other problems with Unreal Engine and let's be fair, Unreal Engine is the most problematic of the game engines on the, uh, the MacBook Pro. Uh, and this is going to be a, a MacBook problem in general. So this is going to apply to the Intels as well. As you can see, the performance is great. It, I mean, on the whole, I am really quite impressed with how well Unreal Engine, both 4.x and 5 run. And with 5, uh, the full screen support is a bit better. Uh, you can get it full screen without having uh, your... Um, 
your start. I don't know what it's called in Mac. Sorry, I'm mostly a Windows user. Uh, but this not showing up um, with Unreal Engine 5, but with Unreal Engine 4, it is there. Now, the next biggest problem is pretty big, and that is Unreal Engine 5 uh, nanites and lumens. So the new things for doing lighting in Unreal Engine uh, are not supported on Mac. Um, and I don't know if that's ever going to change. I reached out to them. I never got an answer back on that one. So I don't know if nanites and um, lumens are going to be coming to Unreal Engine 5 on Mac. I assume they are. I think that's a fairly safe assumption, but there's no word about that yet. But where it gets even more annoying is there are some plugins, such as the um, the modeling tool plugins, which are Windows only. And the worst part is it doesn't even tell you. So you install the plugin and it just doesn't work. Um, so you're going to find plugins and, and um, assets. Some of the things that we've gotten for free are Windows platform only for developer tools. So you're going to find a few things that don't work. But in terms of the core tools themselves, Unreal Engine works very well. Uh, on um, as you can see, here's the performance. The performance is really good. I, I'm very impressed with how well Unreal Engine runs on Mac hardware, but the biggest things you're going to want to be aware of as of yet, no lumens and no nanite. Nanite is the thing that allows you to have like unlimited polygon budgets and uh, lumens is a real-time lighting technology. Those have not been announced for Unreal Engine 5 on Mac hardware yet. And then when you're dealing with uh, Unreal Engine 4.x, the Epic Games Launcher takes up a massive amount of CPU for stupid reasons. Uh, it hasn't been built for Apple Silicon yet. And uh, finally, you get some plugins that simply don't run on uh, the Apple platform. Something to be aware of. But in terms of the engine itself, runs just great. The performance is great. Uh, it just I, I'm impressed. It runs as well as it does on my... Uh, 2070 laptop, perhaps a little bit better. So that here is Unreal Engine. And we demonstrated 4.x, but do be aware, uh, Unreal Engine uh, 5 also runs quite well. And then finally, we come to Blender. And in Blender, in all honesty, there's not a whole lot to say. This is uh, the splash screen project. Uh, Blender runs really really well. Uh, this is the 3.0.0 beta. Uh, the only real negative right now is GPU compute is missing. So um, there's an NVIDIA version in there and um, uh, what is it, Open G, no, not Open, yeah, Open OpenCL. Uh, those are not supported right now on Apple platforms. So that means uh, your rendering times, especially with the upcoming Cycles X, aren't as great as they should be. So Cycles X is coming in Blender 3.0. However, Blender 3.1, Apple has added GPU support for Metal. So this isn't really a problem with Blender. This is a temporary problem with Blender. So with um, version uh, uh, 3.1, Apple should catch up to 3.0. So we're seeing uh, the biggest problem that you're going to have is GPU compute doesn't fully support the Apple Silicon. Um, so it's looking for AMD hardware or NVIDIA hardware specifically. But Apple engineers have added uh, metal GPU support coming in Blender 3.1. So basically, you just got to wait about five or six months and Blender will be flawless. In the meantime, performance is great. Uh, everything has worked exactly as I would expect it. Uh, I am generally uh, impressed with the way that it performs. I find just basically on the whole, it works like you would expect it to. Uh, the GPU is plenty powerful enough for doing real-time presentation. Just do be aware when it comes to rendering, and I think GPU compute would also be applying to things like uh, physics simulations and so on. You're not getting full support of your hardware, and you won't until version 3.1. But Apple, again, have submitted a uh, patch. Their development team is working with Blender ever since they gave them a grant uh, six months ago, I think it was, maybe a bit less than that. Um, so they are definitely working on fixing these problems but do be aware that is the final issue that you're going to encounter not having full GPU support until that metal patch makes it into blender in version 3.1 all right so that is it the rundown of uh, I guess the negative sides of development on um, a MacBook Pro bit of a summary uh, Unreal Engine has the most problems by far it's not compiled for Apple hardware um, it doesn't support full screen that well epic games launcher takes up a ton of resources for reasons I don't understand and um, no nanites, lumens, and some plugins are missing. But other than that, it runs just fine. Uh, on the Unity side of things, the biggest thing is that UI lag, which is infuriating, and hopefully it's fixed
fixed soon, but that is definitely the biggest problem there. Godot, the GPU runs constantly, and Core Audio Daemon just kind of chews up a bit of process. Otherwise, it runs pretty good. Uh, that constant GPU, though, means your battery life is going to suck. You get three or four hours out of using Godot, maybe even a little bit less. And Blender, Blender, you're just basically waiting for version 3.1 to fully support Mac hardware. And in the meantime, you're not getting the full experience, but I find even just the render performance, the GPU performance, or real-time viewports, all of that stuff, Blender works quite well. So those are the biggest negatives I've encountered in the first few weeks. Again, it may not be the best primary development environment for a game development laptop, I would still probably recommend a Windows machine. But if you want a portable machine that runs at full speed on battery and the battery lasts several hours, it's hard to beat a MacBook Pro right now. And for game development tasks, if you're willing to put up with some niggling issues, it's a pretty good machine. Now, if you're doing primarily Unreal Engine development, I would probably look at a different device. But for the other three products, definitely. Uh, highly recommended still, but there are some issues. That's it. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.